Come out this evening with uh, Steve Stain and Tom Ward. <laughs> um, come to a place we came to last year, which was Tyso Windmill. Um, hopefully for a bit of astrophotography later, but actually while I'm here, I think it's a great opportunity for me to try and make do a wrong that I made last year while photographing this windmill, um, because I completely messed up that shot. I got the vein of the windmill in completely the wrong place and it just doesn't look right. So I've actually come to the other side of the windmill um, than what I was shooting last year. And basically I've got the sun pretty much coming into my eyes now. You can probably see that on my face. And it's making quite a nice shot. Um, I initially started with the, the tripod quite high, um, which didn't really work. It was just a bit boring. So what I've done is I've got the tripod right down here. And basically I've got the, uh, the grasses that have got some lovely light on them, sort of leading through to, to the windmill here. Um, I'm not too particularly bothered about the, the focus of the grasses because the wind's quite high at the moment, so they're moving around, so it might look quite painterly um, with them moving around and with them being slightly out of focus. But really, it's just about the, the windmill on the right-hand third. The sun, in a short while, will be pretty much on the left-hand third. And I'm doing an exposure bracket as well with um, three stops either side just to make sure I can get that sun as much as I can um, exposed correctly. Um, Tom has gone somewhere down the hill over there but obviously Steve framing up I guess probably a very similar -ish image with where he is um, but wow it's a beautiful evening but there is no clouds in the sky which is not going to work out particularly great for sunset but when we come to do some astro later should be really really quite special so yeah um, another thing to say astro the Milky Way is probably not up to about ooh, 1 a.m in the morning and I've got work at 6 a.m. in the morning tomorrow. So yeah, burning the candle at both ends. Anyway, I'm gonna put this shot on screen now, and I'm also gonna put another shot on, which I talked just walking up here of the, uh, the church in the village, I think it's Tyso village, and there's some lovely side lights on there with some beautiful spring colors of the trees around it. So I'll put that one on screen as well. So just around the top of this windmill here, there are quite a lot of um, sheep, but they seem to be hanging around on the other side of the windmill. What I'd love, with the sun where it is, is just to sort of rim light some of these sheep and add those into the part of the frame, which make a much more compelling image. Um, but they don't seem to be playing ball at the moment. So I'll send Steve up with a drone to chase them and, and round them up into the right area. No, I haven't, I haven't, but <laughs> hopefully they do come where I want them to be. But, and uh, yeah, that would make quite, a, quite an interesting image. So if I do manage to get that, I will put it on screen. If not, you won't see it. Uh, so just, yeah, just chilling out. It's a beautiful, beautiful late spring evening. And uh, yeah, I'm sure there's uh, many images to be had. Had a quick fly with the drone. Uh, got some quite nice footage actually. Um, but I, yeah, landed the drone, completely forgot to take a photo of it because <laughs> I had full intention of taking a photo with the windmill and the sheep, but I got too engrossed in making the video. Um, yeah, that's just joys of being a vlogger, unfortunately. Um, so what I've done as well, um, the sun that was over there now, which was creating that lovely golden light, as you can see, it's completely gone on my face. Um, basically a massive bank of cloud out there to the west. Um, but actually I think it's made the photo I took earlier that little bit better, just adds that extra level of interest because you've still got the sun just poking through the top of those clouds. Um, it's just diffusing it quite nicely. So 
I'll put that one on screen. Uh, let me know which one you prefer, the one from earlier or, or this one. Um, but <laughs> I think, as you can see now, it's gone completely flat. So for the while at least, I don't think we're going to get much more in the way of photos. Um, but still, it's just a beautiful evening. Absolutely beautiful. So yeah, let's see what happens later. Oh, just one other thing as well. Just before we came out earlier, I got an alert on my phone for a got an alert on my phone for a uh, Aurora alert, yellow alert. Um, and Steve was telling me earlier there was a red alert for um, here yesterday. So if we stick here long enough, you never know. We might get lucky. It might make up for a Pemon Lighthouse a few weeks ago. So let's see what happens. Hopefully you can all see me okay. Um, it's very, very dark here now. Um, so yeah, the stars aren't really out yet. Just over there I can see Venus, um, but I'm just testing out this new, uh, this new vlogging camera. Um, it's the Sony ZV-E1. I'm currently at 409,600 ISO. It is a bit noisy, um, but then again, it is pretty much pitch black here. Um, just one thing I wanted to explain tonight is um, I'm not just gonna be using my Sony to shoot Astro One. Um, I'm also going to have a go on my phone. It's a, it's a Google Pixel 6 Pro, and it has this night sight feature, which when you stick it on a tripod, um, can get, apparently get very good astro shots. So I'm going to give that a go in a bit. Uh, but as I say, I will be using my Sony as well. Um, I haven't got a fast lens for my Sony. I've only got the uh, 24 to 105 f4, so it's really not a lens made for astro. But we'll give it a go anyway. Uh, it's just good to be out just taking photos with a couple of good friends. Uh, so yeah, good to do a comparison between the two devices. Um, but as I say, currently about 11 o'clock, there is still a touch of light in the sky. Um, yeah, we've probably got another hour till it properly gets dark and we can start to see the stars properly. All right, hopefully you can uh, see me okay still. Um, so got a bit of a plan um, that we concocted between the three of us. <laughs> So um, currently shooting kind of towards the northeast, I would say, slightly. And I've got the windmill directly in front of me. And I'm placing that on the bottom left hand, well, on the left hand third. And uh, taking a five minute, oh, sorry, six minute exposure at ISO 200 um, and F5.6. So that's, that's going to be my foreground shot. Quite a basic scene, and there is no real foreground as such. It's just the windmill, and the plan is to have the, the uh, Milky Way kind of arching over it. Um, so I'll take that shot, and then what we'll do is, is once the Milky Way properly comes up in a bit, this is a bit darker, um, we'll get a picture of the Milky Way, and we'll blend the two together in Photoshop. I'll probably end up taking, say, maybe 12 shots for the Milky Way, and blend those together in Photoshop. Um, but then Tom has also come up with another idea before, maybe a more interesting photo. And behind us, um, there's some trees. Tom wants to take us into the trees. I'm a bit worried, it's dark and uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but he wants to take us into the trees anyway, because he thinks he's found a, a potential good composition there where we can use this wall, uh, I think, as like a leading line, and obviously the, the windmill and then the Milky Way. So that is a bit of a plan. So yeah, getting these shots in the bag now, uh, really for the foreground interest get the uh, Milky Way shots to go over that and sort of um, work those in Photoshop. And then also we're thinking of maybe doing some star trails with pretty much the windmill, which is kind of facing, well, it's facing south, but obviously beyond that is facing north. Um, so yeah, uh, some star trails going around the, uh, the windmill I should make quite an interesting shot. So there's quite a few opportunities here. So yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, so Tom has uh, brought us into the woods because he wanted to show us something. Sounds a bit crude, doesn't it? Um, sorry. So, he's, yeah, he's brought us into this woods and I can see why he has. Um, as you can probably actually just make out behind me here, you've got the windmill here and obviously I've got the camera set up over here. But you've got this tree coming in from this side here. Um, and obviously it's framing the windmill. And then, sorry, just on this side, there's a branch, uh, sorry, a trunk here. 
So it's a lovely frame of the windmill, which I'm not entirely sure is going to work for Astro, because um, you've got a very small space to actually fit the stars. So, yeah, not sure. The other issue I've got as well, and you can probably see that, the trees are moving quite a lot. Um, so I've taken a, a, another six minute exposure, but there's quite a bit of blur in the leaves. So maybe it's just one of those things I've just got to accept that there is a bit of motion in the leaves. Um, but yeah, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and work this one anyway. Um, like I say, I don't think necessarily it's going to work, but um, what I'll do is, as I said back there earlier, I'll get a photo of the stars and I'll blend that in in Photoshop. Um, yeah, it might be work out quite interesting. Something a bit different from here. So yeah, thanks to Tom for bringing us over here. And just to mention actually, um, Tom's never been on this channel before, but he is a fantastic astrophotographer. Um, all evening he's been pointing out different things to me, and different constellations and that kind of stuff, which I know nothing about. I am by no means an astrophotographer. Um, yeah, he knows this sort of stuff and he's got all this fancy star tracking gear and you know, you name it. So yeah, um, I might go back up this way as well. There was another potential composition as well with two tree trunks kind of framing the windmill. Um, again, just making something a little bit different because most people would probably do what we've just done back there and they'll just go in and plonk the camera down, put the windmill on one of the thirds, basic shots. So actually have some foreground just makes it that little bit more interesting. Uh, so yeah, get this one. If it works out, I'll pop it on screen. Um, and then I'm gonna go up there, try and get that shot. Tom's gone down that way, down some steps, um, not to shoot the windmill, but to actually shoot this sort of like leading path through um, with a wall. Uh, so that might be something to look at as well. Um, but as I say, the one thing I wanted to do, try and wanna do is get a lot, um, long exposure of um, star trails with a windmill pretty much in the center. I think that'd be quite a good image. Um, just another thing to point out, and I've never noticed this before, I, mean, I notice it more at night time, sheep make the weirdest noises. Okay, so I met up with Steve and I've stolen his composition, as I always do. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you, again, you can see, uh, we'll go this way, the windmill over here, and you've got these two trees that are framing it. I put the windmill right in the center of that, and you've got a tree on here on the uh, left-hand side. Um, but I've gone in the portrait orientation, so I'm capturing the, all the tree in, probably just made that out, and some of the, uh, the foliage at the top there. Quite an interesting scene, actually. Um, so. Yeah, again, same as I've been doing with all of them. Going to take a shot for the Milky Way later, layer it behind in, in the Photoshop, do a sky replacement with that. And hopefully, fingers crossed, it should turn out, turn out all right. I have got the same problem I had before. The wind has picked up quite a bit, so the leaves are moving around. But you know what? It is what it is. These are the conditions we've got. There's nothing else I can really do to, to get rid of that. So we just work with the conditions we've got. Right, so we've come away from the trees now. Uh, back onto the top of the hill. Windmill is, where has it gone? No, nope, lost it. Windmill's there. <laughs> um, Tom is setting up his star tracker and I've just been helping him uh, get the polar alignment with this uh, laser pen. And you can probably just see, I shoot that up. Really super powerful laser. So yeah, getting, getting that set up for him. Uh, he's going to let me put my camera on there to do a, a track of the stars. We should get a really nice, clear, clean image for the stars that I can use in my windmill photos later on. So I'm going to crack on with this now. And uh, yeah, any of the images we get, actually what I'll end up doing is put them on at the end. But uh, yeah, it's gone bitterly, bitterly cold now. This wind's really picked up. Um, Steve's back over this way doing the uh, long exposure, the, um, what do you call it? Star trails. <laughs> so yeah, what a great evening, really enjoying this. So before I have a play with Tom's star tracker, um, I thought I'd have a go at taking some shots myself. So I'm using the interval function 
Uh, we're going to take between 10 to 12 shots. Um, I'm at ISO 6400, because remember I'm on an F4 lens. Um, 20 second exposure, um, and obviously at F4. So, yeah, what I'll do is I'll take those 10 to 12, and I'll stick them in a, a Fuji 24 What I'll do is I'll take those 10 to 12, and I'll stick them in an application called Sequitor, which is a free software, um, to blend those together, just to try and get rid of some of that noise and uh, see how that works out. I'm in a portrait orientation at the moment, and then once I've done that, I'll take another one for landscape so I can use those on the photos that I've taken so far already tonight. Okay, so we're just uh, trying to find somewhere to get a clear view towards the uh, Milky Way core. And I was just taking a bit of uh, B-roll on this camera and yeah, I couldn't quite believe it. Um, we're shooting at quarter of a second just to try and get some uh, view of the stars. And in that split second, a shooting star came through with the most bright green tail. Absolutely spectacular. So I'll put that on screen now. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Okay, so we've come down the hill a little way uh, to try and get a clear view of the Milky Way core. And uh, yeah, we're in a much better position now. Um, even with my little F4 lens, I'm still managing to see it quite clearly. Um, actually going down to ISO 4000, it just seems to work better for me in this particular scene for whatever reason. No idea why. Um, but yeah, so I'm just uh, running a bit on an intervalometer now, taking 12 shots. Again, I'll stack in the sequitor just to try and uh, get as much detail and reduce the noise. Uh, Tom's on his uh, star tracker again. Had a play with that a short while ago. And uh, yeah, wow. <laughs> it uh, certainly makes a difference. Um, completely noiseless, really pin sharp stars. Um, yeah, maybe on my Christmas wish list at some point. Um, but yeah, so it's just uh, Steve here, Tom over there, and obviously me in the middle. And uh, yeah, get these shots, and then we're going to go, I think, back up towards the, uh, the windmill and try and frame up a few more compositions um, that I can use to put these, these star photos, if you like, behind them. And uh, yeah, I'll put those on the screen uh, when we get up there. So um, I still want to get my uh, star track, um, star trails image. Definitely want to get that. And uh, yeah. It's a lot, lot calmer now. The wind's completely died down, um, which is creating some additional problems because, well, it's not happened to me yet, but it certainly happened to Tom and it certainly happened to Steve. The uh, lenses have started to fog up. Um, just as I say that, I go completely out of focus. Not sure what's happened there. <laughs> All right, we're back in focus. So, yeah, get these shots, get back up there, talk you through the rest of uh, what's going on. One of the issues that might happen is we do have some clouds coming through over here. Um, but where we're shooting towards, there's no clouds, so long may that last. <laughs> but uh, it's such a brilliant night. I am going to be so tired for work tomorrow. It's now about coming up to 2 a.m. And I've got work at 6 a.m. for a, a few hours. So, <laughs> yeah, the things we do, hey? What time is it? It is 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, bang on. Okay, so it's now three o'clock. I've got work at six o'clock. Uh, I've got an hour's drive home, so I'm gonna have about two hours sleep at the most. Um, so I've taken one last shot here from the back end of the windmill, looking towards where the uh, core of the Milky Way is. So the shots that I took down the hill a moment ago, I'll use to put behind this, uh, this milk windmill here. Um, I've taken two shots. I've taken one with my actual camera, uh, putting the windmill on the right hand third and just balancing it between these two sets of trees. Um, and I've taken another shot with my phone, taking exactly the same composition using the Astro Photography mode on my Google Pixel 6 Pro. And uh, yeah, on the back of the phone, it looks pretty, pretty bad to be honest with you. There's just no detail in the sky at all. And uh, it looks like it may have missed focus. So yeah, not the best experience and it's not something I'd recommend if you're coming out shooting Astro. It might be me, I've obviously made some kind of mistake because I have seen um, photos where it has taken and it looks spectacular. So I'll have to do some research on that. But um, I'm not gonna get my uh, star trail shot tonight. I just simply haven't got the time. Um, so it's one to come back and get at another point. So yeah, really enjoyed this evening. Um, feeling very, very tired now. Um, can't even get my words out. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll put a link to uh, Tom and uh, Steve's uh, videos and Instagrams and stuff in the description below. Go, please do go and check them out. As I say, Tom is an absolutely phenomenal astro uh, photographer. 
and obviously Steve needs no introduction to this channel. So thank you very much for watching. See you soon.